Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Animate Orange, and welcome to another Metal Earth build video. Today, we're going to put together the Death Star model from Metal Earth. And I've always thought that this is probably a fairly simple model, it's just a spear, it doesn't seem to be a lot of parts to it. Well, is that the case? Let's go over to the table, open this up, see what's inside, and put it together. Alright, let's open up the Death Star and see what we're dealing with here. Inside we have looks like two metal sheets with some rather large pieces. A lot of empty space. And something just kind of fell out there. So, whoops. And certainly there are instructions here are the instructions. Looks like just one piece of paper. If you're not familiar with these models, Metal Earth models, I'll go over the instructions fairly quickly. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Basically, you open up the instructions inside, and the first page is the page with the, the logos on it. The Star Wars logo, the Metal Earth logo, the line drawing of the model, and, one, and the one sheet. 360 view. You can either scan this QR code or go to this website to see a 360 completed model for reference sake that can sometimes come in handy. We have a sample part down here with a notation on insertion tabs, insertion holes, and fold lines. Fold lines are just basically pre-scored areas where parts fold. And insertion holes and tabs, I mean tabs go into holes. It's pretty kind of self-explanatory. Sometimes on the same part, oftentimes on other parts, and that's how all of this connects together. We have a legend here. Uh, the E and N E. NEE -E stands for the engraved side or sometimes colored side. This, in this instance, it's, it's no coloring, so the engraved side of the model, which it can be easy to confuse the engraved side with the side that has like fold lines and light engraving. I can sometimes get a little confusing, so try to be careful and make sure you understand which is which. Non engraved is a side that doesn't have the detailed engraving that's supposed to show. On the outside and attention point usually when you see this it's talking about making sure you align things a certain way though it can really vary uh, sometimes there's wording with it to explain what you need to pay attention to but if it's not it's usually alignment stuff that you need to make sure this tab is facing this way when you connect these two parts together blue circle and green triangle blue circle when you see that next to a connection point it means to insert tabs and fold them over 90 degrees green triangle means to insert tabs and twist them and i don't see any examples on this page here Assembly tips if needed slightly twist tabs to hold parts together then untwist and bend them down for a nice finish something that I do from time to time and then we have some tools we'll talk about tools here in a moment below that we have the line drawing of the parts or the two sheets we've got sheet A and sheet B so I'm just going to line these up right here kind of move this on screen this is an outline of this sheet, this is an outline of this sheet. You notice there's a few parts that are colored in while most of them are not. The ones that are colored in are duplicate parts. We've only got two here. We've got green, number 11, two of those, and then the blue, which appears to be 14. This one's labeled, this one's not. I mean, they're the same color, the same part. It makes it easier to find them. In this particular model, it's not much difference, but in some models, that's a wonderful thing that they do. And beside that, on page two, we start the assembly flowchart, starting with part one, which is on sheet B. If you remember, the sheets were labeled A and B. If you didn't notice, they were labeled A and B. Um, just have this part one. This is shaped in kind of a dish shape. The red means the part is folded or shaped. The circle is kind of indicating how. Um, it's also the whole part is being curved, so that's maybe saying the red is being shaped is not necessarily completely accurate but this this curve indicates this whole part is round. That means the Death Star if you know what the Death Star is this is pretty easy to figure out you end up with that part. Part 2 which is on B curves you prepare the tabs by folding those in you end up with that and here those two parts connect together with folded over tabs you end up with that. Pretty self-explanatory I think this is going to be a fairly easy model maybe a little bit frustrating trying to get these round and half circle parts with curves in them to stay put. But we'll see how it goes. Obviously you get to the end of that page, you flip over to page three, 
following the arrows, building the parts. Then page four, adding, looks like the stand and adding that on and tops and bottoms and you know, the rest of the stand. And there you go. Once you're at the bottom, you are finished with your model. Let's take a moment to talk about some tools. And I've got what I consider the basic set in front of me, starting with a pair of flush clippers or side clippers. These are primarily used to cut the parts out of the sheets. You can get the parts out by folding and twisting, though you run the risk of breaking something you didn't mean to break. A good pointed set of side cutters or flush cutters, like this Play-Doh set that I've got here, work really great for quickly getting the parts out so you can get on with your build. I have, of course, a small selection of tweezers. We've got a fairly basic set. This actually came with one of the older Iconics sets, and I've been using it for quite a while. But a good sturdy flat end tweezers can come in really handy for doing a great number of things. I also have a few pieces from a precision set of tweezers. If you need some precision tweezers, just search precision tweezers online. You'll be able to find something out there. These two are very similar. They have a very fine point though. I did grind the tip of these down to help me grab tabs. And then this is just kind of a flat set for getting in tight spaces. And then we have couple of pieces left over from the Fascinations three-piece set. I broke the clippers long ago, so I had to replace them. But we have long nose pliers and flat nose pliers. Really handy. These are handy for bending long parts, and these are handy for bending short sections right here. But this is the basic set. We'll do a great amount of things with just this set right here. You'll be able to build a lot of different models and do a lot of different things. When it comes to shaping curved, domed, or rounded kind of parts, I like to have some sort of tool to mold things around. And I've designed some 3D printable tools for use in that. You might see me using the video. I've got some cone shaping tools. I have a little block here for rounding stuff. I have larger cone shape combo tools, and even a little tool for shaping dome shapes. However, you can just look around the house and find parts, dowel rods, pencils, beads, thing, paint brushes, pens, things like that can also be used to shape stuff as well. We've talked a little bit about tools. We've got basic tools to get us started here. We've got some metal sheets. The instructions are kind of at the ready. I'm going to take a moment to get some things organized and we'll get started on this build. As you can see, I am working mostly with my hands to shape the sections of the Death Star. I did use the large cone shaping combo tool to shape the dish.
The instructions indicate to fold the connecting tabs over, but I elected to twist them instead. I felt that that would be far more secure as folded ones can slide out of place. I forgot to fold over a few tabs here. I bent a few tabs here and there that I didn't need to or shouldn't have.
We have constructed two halves, now to put them together. I did fold a lot of these tabs over simply because it was easier than twisting at these angles. For the top and bottom parts, I received a suggestion from a viewer to use a golf ball to shape them. I did not have a golf ball, but I do have a 3D printer. I looked up the size of a golf ball and made a half circle to the correct size. You might also be able to use a appropriately sized styrofoam ball from the craft store. The top bits needed to be folded down more. needs to be bent in more. I elected to twist the tabs holding the top and bottom little circles on. 
It would have looked better if the tabs were folded, but far less secure, I think. I tried to fold one tab, but it just sort of pushed out of place. Before putting the top and bottom on, we need to make and attach the stand.
I did my best to twist these tabs. I more or less just mangled them into staying. Now to finish the model by putting the top and bottom pieces on. I needed to bend the tabs out a bit. I am now realizing as I edit this video that I overlooked the alignment attention point and did not align the seams up for the top and bottom sections. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. I had previously bent the bottom tabs in by mistake and had to bend them out. Almost done, just needed to add the bottom of the stand.
And there you have it, all finished and complete, the Death Star model. There isn't really a whole lot to it. Not all the details pretty much engraved. You've got the dish to put in, everything else is just parts of a spear. Pretty simple and straightforward. I didn't use much of any tools, anything beyond basics, to put this together. It's an interesting little thing. It kind of had to happen. You know, I, I wondered, a lot of people had asked about it before it became a thing, and I had kind of wondered, is it really something we want to go with? Because what are we going to do with the Death well, How much detail can we put in a Death Star? such a large thing, and we're not going to be able to make it. It was so large. So it is what it is. Fairly easy model. You will notice at the end, I didn't put the tops and bottom on quite right. I did take a moment to go back and line the seams up, as the instructions said, though I think they may have meant for me to line them up this way. I don't think it really matters. I was kind of hoping that some of the detail would line up better, and a couple of things did, and a couple of didn't. And I looked at the package, the picture on the package, and it's pretty much showing the same thing. It's like some of the detail lines up, and some of it doesn't really line up. It, don't know that it makes a big difference how you put that top on, but I went back and tried to correct it. Overall, this took, I think it was 41 minutes of recording time to put this together, so not even an hour. It's pretty easy shaping most of it by hand. You know, I, I mentioned how, I think I mentioned how a viewer had suggested they use a golf ball to shape this top and bottom part. I don't have a golf ball. I haven't been golfing. Not putt putt is all I've ever done and I you know you, you don't have your own ball for putt-putt they give you one so my solution because I have a 3d printer was just find out what the size of a golf ball is quickly model uh, half a spear the size of half of a golf ball and 3d print that out and that's what I use you can probably use maybe a ping-pong ball uh, maybe not they might collapse too easily but like a similarly sized styrofoam ball from the craft store probably do something like that might be able to shape probably can shape it by hand it's just going to take more time but having a golf ball some sort of spear is going to speed things up pretty simple i'm going to leave it at that i'm, I'm i feel like i'm going to talk for 40 minutes as much time as it took to build it if i keep going it's pretty simple and straightforward the dish is used a tool to shape it most of it shapes by hand the stand is pretty simple and straightforward you know it's only so secure but then again i mean what it's not much to it pretty simple and just for those who are curious, if you don't already know, it's really not that much bigger than any other Metal Earth model. It's just, you know, compact spear. So certainly not to scale at all. Not, not large. And even if they made it iconic size or even mega size, how much more detail could they put into it other than just engraving? I'm going to leave it at that. As always, thank you for watching. Thank you to my Patreon supporters for continuing to support this channel. And as always, keep on keeping on.